Hi, writers and readers. I'm Christy Stratus, and today I'm going to be talking about um, something with a comment, a really great comment that I got on uh, a different video. The video was called Research Rabbit Hole Psychiana, and I will link to it up here and in the description box as well in case you didn't see it. And basically what I talked about in there very basically it was, um, I had bought some World War II letters and um, in there I found this advertisement for something called Psychiana, which I don't know a ton about, but um, I just mentioned it because the advertisement was in there and it was very interesting. I started researching the person behind it and just found it fascinating. And then when I you know, typed it into Google, I found that on eBay there was this uh, notebook kind of thing called Modern Religious Cults, something that someone had a question about. And she is my uh, name sister. Her name is Christy Clark, and she commented, what a find. I wrote my senior thesis in college on Psychiana. It's a little known fact that Psychiana actually started in my university town and the place I currently call home. I would be interested to know more about the primary source you found on Modern Religious Cults. So um, I'm going to share with you uh, a little bit more about modern religious cults. So this actually looks a bit like it's kind of a binder um, and it does say on the inside that it can be mimeographed. So essentially copied um, for other people who would take the course um, that this was used for. And so this was actually for San Francisco Theological Seminary uh, in 1958, their spring quarter and I even have the professor, C.M. Drury, uh, which is just some really cool details. So apparently you could get copies of um, this whole booklet here uh, for $1.25. <laughs> and when you think about how much it costs to buy a book for college, you know, at least when I was going to college, it could be anywhere between $100 and $200 or something like that. It was ridiculously expensive. Um, $1.25 sounds pretty good back then. So again, this was 1958 and everything was very different. The economy was very different. Um, and I wanted to share with you the professor's name was actually Clifford M. Drury. So we have a little bit more of his name and it has a page that includes the purpose of the course. So I'm gonna read you a little bit from there. Um, the first purpose is to acquaint the student with the history, teachings, and promotional techniques of modern cults and sects. The second is to appraise the basic causes which give rise to such movements and cause them to flourish. Uh, the third is to see if there are any lessons which the Christian church may learn from their doctrines and or practices. And the fourth is to suggest countermeasures or techniques which the church can or should take to meet the threat of the cults. So kind of an interesting word being used there, threat. Um, very, <laughs> not, not really what I would have expected. Now in the table of contents, the table of contents includes all of these so-called cults. And let me read you the list of them. So the early American ones include Swedenborgianism, I may be mispronouncing things, um, Anglo-Israel, Shakerism, Oneida community, Mormonism, spiritualism, astrology, Adventism, and then later American includes Christian science, Jehovah's Witnesses, uh, Rosicrucians, um, unity and new thought. And then in recent American, the first one is Psychiana, which is what Christy was interested in. And then there is one that has quotes around it and says, I am Father Divine, uh, Four Square Gospel, Pentecostalism, Fundamentalism, Faith Healing, and finally Oxford Movement. So these were all considered cults apparently at the time, which is kind of surprising. It just um, tells you a little bit more about the time period. And also I did look into San Francisco um, Theological Seminary a little bit. And I found that recently, actually in the past year, they've been merged with the University of Redlands. And now on the page that says San Francisco Theological Seminary, it's still called that, it sounds a bit different than how this sounds, what I just read to you. Um, how they describe themselves is, at San Francisco Theological Seminary, we believe that religion and specifically Christian faith should inspire each of us to be a positive force for good in the world. It should show us the way to make the world a better place, not just for some, but for everyone. Founded in 1871 and affiliated with the Presbyterian Church, 
USA, it always says USA in parentheses, SFTS va values dialogue and engagement with other religions and faith traditions. And I see that as a kind of 180 from what this is. Whereas nowadays it says that it values, you know, engagement with other religions and faith traditions. Um, this modern religious cults class seems to take um, these other movements as they literally call them a threat, which just kind of fascinated me. It, it's not, um, again, it's not really what I would expect from a college in general. You know, normally, at least at my college, pretty much everything was neutral and you needed to make up your own mind about things. But this is obviously very different. So this, um, you know, like I said, could have been purchased by loads and loads of students. And I found out that, um, I believe in my research, I was finding that in about like after the 19 after 1900 at some point um and i believe it was after world war ii um that the san francisco theological seminary became a lot more popular and had a lot more students so um i'm just telling you a little bit of background about them and what i decided to do was uh, you know this being this could be a primary resource if you were deciding that you wanted to write about somebody who was going there in the 50s or something like that. Um, you have a course right here that explains everything that they taught um, about this in this modern religious cults class. And maybe it would help inform a character. Let's say you were writing um, fiction and you had a character who, you know, went to this college. This could kind of inform their thought process on other religions or something like that. And you'd know it's pretty accurate because it's that's the college they would have gone to, maybe. Um, and then on page, let's see, it's page 53. It does share specifically about Psychiana. And you know that I'm gonna take pictures of, I've taken pictures and I put them up on the blog so that you can read it if you want to, but if that's something you're not interested in, um, then of course you can skip that. But What's good about that also, um, Christy, for your information, is that I'm including a page that is the reference materials used for this section, specifically Psychiana. Um, so back then, this would be the research that they used. And it was um, from the ninth, it looks like their, their primary resources uh, is from 1930 to 1951. Those are the years that I'm seeing here. What I think is interesting is whatever you learned, Christy, about Psychiana, how it compares to what you're going to read um, on the blog if you decide to visit it. Is it any different? Is it, you know, is what you learned now a lot more informed and very different? Do you see that maybe um, this particular class has a lot of sort of skewed information, especially like, you know, with the wording that they're using of cult and threat and things like that? Um, I think that would be probably the most fascinating part. And they are pretty blunt in here. They're not always... Um, as neutral as I would expect a college to be. So anyway, I hope that that's helpful for you. I'm also, I'm gonna take a couple of pictures, actually not just the Psychiana pages, but I'm gonna take a couple of pages um, of their other resources and probably include those in the blog as well. So I hope you found that interesting. Um, I'm always finding, you know, these kinds of things to be fascinating, even if I never end up doing something with this, with my writing. Um, I just think it's really interesting. So let me know what you guys think down below. And Christy, like I said, I hope that answers your question. And if you have any other questions about this booklet, let me know. Apparently it would have cost you $1.25 to get your own copy back then, but it was definitely more expensive than that now. <laughs> so thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.